gradient from northwest to southeast than it is north to south. The gradient is We've been talking about this for a few days now, and the, yeah, I think he does. I'm up and we, if you don't know, James, I didn't know Evansville has a crumble cookie. Okay, everybody, let's get started. So the discussion is a winter storm. We've been talking about this for a few days now. And let me pull up my graphics here. For those wondering, and you've asked me, what counties do I cover? So basically from Jefferson County, Illinois, down to Northwest Tennessee, and then from Butler County, Missouri, Poplar Bluff, to Todd County, uh, which is Hopkinsville, and then Todd County is on the other side of Christian County, which is where Hopkinsville is. And then I go all the way up to St. Genevieve County and over to Owensboro. So basically, that's my area. So Illinois, Southeast Missouri, Northwest Tennessee, and Western Kentucky. So in case you're wondering, when I put out a forecast and it's not snowing in your town, it may be snowing in other towns that I cover, okay? So I have a YouTube channel. Let's go there and subscribe to that also. That's free to subscribe to. It's uh, at BoDotson, Instagram at BoDotson, TikTok at BoDotson, and Twitter at BoDotson. And you can find me there. So what's the bottom line? Bottom line up front is a winter storm will impact portions of our region Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Heavy wet snow, power outages likely. The most likely highest impact zone will be at this time, subject to adjustments, Southeast Missouri and Southern Illinois. I think that no matter what happens, those two areas are where the primary concern is. Now, does that mean the Boot Hill, West Kentucky and West Tennessee are out of the woods? No. Some of the model came in this afternoon farther south with the low. Low tracks further south, the snow goes farther south. So everyone should pay attention. One thing to remember during winter weather and social media is be careful what you share. There's a lot of graphics that we have available to us. We don't share them all because some of them are crazy, like showing 20 inches of snow, and we know that's not going to happen. Um, sometimes I'll show you graphics that show some interesting solutions, but I'll go into detail and discuss them, discuss what those graphics mean. So be careful what you share on social media. I know it's the more dramatic graphics are, the more they seem to get shared. So sometimes that can be a problem. So make sure you, you are going to trusted sources. So for example, this is one of the maps that the models spit out showing these crazy snow totals. Can it happen? Can there be some big snow totals from this? Yes, but this model isn't taking into account the heavy wet snow, the temperatures being maybe even above freezing while it's snowing. There's a lot of factors that go into snow accumulation. Also, I will point out there's some crazy snow gradients uh, in some of the models. For example, um, if you can see this, you can see Cape Girardeau here on that on that graphic that I showed you a go had 14 inches of snow, 15 inches, and then Paducah had five inches. The gradient here is insane. But anyway, that's just one of the models that's uh, spitting out stuff like that. So not saying that's what's going to fall by any means. I'm just showing you the graphic, uh, how crazy the graphics can get sometimes. The National Weather Service issued a winter storm watch. 
Next would come either a winter storm warning or a winter weather advisory, depending on what they decide to do. Uh, so far, the only counties in my area are Bollinger, St. Genevieve, Perry in Missouri, and then Randolph County, Illinois. Randolph County, Illinois. Do I think additional counties will be added? Yes, I do think additional counties may be added uh, when the Weather Service updates tomorrow morning at 3 a.m. or 11 a.m. We'll see what happens, but either way, snow may fall, will fall farther to the east, southeast of where the current watch is. This is just where they're currently most confident that winter storm criteria may be met. We like to, we like to ramp up, not down. In other words, we don't want to go all in in the first forecast. And usually I tell you that an accurate snow forecast is made 24 to 48 hours in advance. So we're nearing that 48 hour mark now. But you know, as new data comes in, these forecasts can be adjusted. You just don't want to jump the gun too much right off the bat. One of the problems with this particular winter storm is temperatures. Temperatures may actually be above freezing during some of the snow, and that raises questions for forecasters as to um, how much snow will stick. Will it stick to the roads if temperatures are above freezing? My experience in this area and having been through many, many, many snowstorms is that if it snows hard enough, fast enough, it doesn't matter if it's 35, 36 degrees, it will stick and it will accumulate on, even on roads and temperatures will fall to 32 degrees. If it falls fast enough, hard enough, temperatures will fall because it's dragging down, it's dragging down colder air from higher aloft in the atmosphere and the snowflakes themselves are frozen. And so temperatures fall. And that's going to be what we'll be watching for with this winter storm is how fast the snow falls, the intensity of it. Light snow with temperatures of 35, 36, 37 just typically doesn't accumulate very much, if at all. It just doesn't. But if you have moderate to heavy snow, it certainly can, especially if the snowflakes are big. So what we're looking at with this particular winter storm is the low is going to come in from Texas. And it's going to move north, northeast. It may even move due north at times. You'll have a cold front extending down to the Gulf of Mexico, and you'll have this warm front. Now, notice something here. South of the warm front, it's warm. South and east of the low, it's warm. I always tell you, if you want snow in the wintertime, usually, not always, usually you want to be north of the low. That's where our true blue winter storms come from. When a low tracks in from Texas, Mississippi, Louisiana, north side of it heavy snow to the south and east of it thunderstorms and so far this year we've had three severe weather episodes in january because we've basically been south and east of the low every time so cold air back here mild air down here along the gulf of mexico and there's your winter storm somewhere in between and like i mentioned a while ago we may have severe weather along the gulf of mexico and then the intensity of the snow is what we'll be watching in our local area to try and figure out how much snow is going to fall. There's a couple of scenarios still on the table. Nothing is set in stone. We'll know a lot more in the next 12 hours. The storm system is ashore. The models are fully sampling it. Confidence is growing as we get into the short range with the higher resolution models. All of that will help us put together a better forecast. If the low tracks over us, or maybe slightly north of us, which is unlikely, more likely over us, then the bulk of the snow will fall from Missouri until Illinois, perhaps in that winter storm watch area the Weather Service put out. But if the low were to track farther south, the first graphic on top, if the low were to track farther south, say North Mississippi and the Central Tennessee, that pulls the snow farther to the south and east. That would include the Boot Hill, West Kentucky, maybe even parts of West Tennessee, definitely Missouri and Illinois, and definitely parts of Kentucky. If that low tracks further south, then it's game on in other areas outside of the winter storm watch. If the low tracks right over us, the winter storm watch looks appropriate to me. There could also be snow outside the winter storm watch, maybe not quite as much, but still some snow. This comes in two phases. There'll be a phase one and phase two to the storm system. Uh, both will produce some snow. The first one, Hard to say which one will produce the most snow, but there'll be two rounds, a lull, a round of snow, a lull, and a round of snow, and also rain. Keep that in mind. Not just snow. This is also a rain event for a, a good chunk of our region. Uh, the southern and southeastern half of the region may be mostly rain with some snow, but mostly rain. 
Missouri, Illinois has the best chance of the snow, and then we'll just have to keep an eye on Kentucky. All right, so that's what we know. We know a winter storm, a winter storm will impact our region. We know for sure we're going to get rain and snow, 100% chance. We just don't know yet where the track of the low will be. So what should you do? Just monitor the updates. There's no reason to rush out and buy groceries. There's no reason to change your to change anything. If you're in the winter storm watch or Missouri and Illinois and you've got travel plans Wednesday morning, you may need to adjust them. Temperatures Wednesday will rise above freezing area wide. Matter of fact, some areas may approach 40 degrees, upper 30s, mid 30s, upper 30s. And so that being the case, if it does snow, it'll melt off the roads. You may just need to give yourself more time on Wednesday. But this isn't the kind of system that necessarily you should rush out and change uh, and buy a bunch of groceries. There could also be power outages. This is going to be a very wet snow, I'm like a shaving cream type snow. Uh, it will stick to everything, pasty, and with strong and gusty winds into Thursday, gusting about 30 miles an hour, power outages are a concern, especially over Missouri and Illinois. Now, if the heavier snow were to track further south and east, then we'd have power outages elsewhere as well. So that is a concern in the heaviest snow area power outages seem almost certain to me based on experience around here is tree branches and some power lines could even fall not from ice from the weight of the heavy wet snow this will be a wet snow so if you like to build a snowman this will be the, sn the snow to do that in so the key message again is that a winter storm will impact our region uh, tuesday night and wednesday track of the system is key to where that rain and snow line will set up if the low moves farther north, then push the snow farther north. If the low moves farther south, then we'll pull it closer to the Ohio River, maybe even south of the Ohio River. That's what the storm system looked like when it came ashore. Almost looks like a hurricane. It's a common shape. It's a like a mid-latitude cyclone. Area of low pressure here rotates counterclockwise. You can see the moisture being pulled into it from the Pacific. This is the one that's diving down into Texas over the next uh, over the next few days. Uh, let's see here. Skip that. Um, don't forget to sign up for the weathertalk.com. And we also have rapid fire tornado messages. So with every radar scan, I send you an update. So you can see here from one of our tornado events how fast all the tornado warnings came in. But every few minutes, you were getting a new one telling you where the tornado is located. And you do that at weathertalk.com. And then after that, you go to the app store and download the Weather Talk app. You pick and choose what products you want. So we have the, uh, the daily forecast down here. Number four, we have extra, uh, weather extra on non-severe weather days. You'll receive the social media alerts, severe weather days, social media alerts, the Facebook Lives. Number one is the most important. Make sure that's green. That's the one for the tornado warnings, the ice storm warnings, stuff like that. And like I said, if you choose uh, two and four, that gets you the social media ones. Four doesn't override the rest of them, so you have to turn them both on. Make sure you turn them both on. And again, you do that at weathertalk.com. All right, so forecasts evolve. They're not static. And sometimes people say, well, you said it was going to do this. And I'm like, but no, we changed that forecast. Forecasts change. We're trying to predict the future here. And so forecasts evolve and change as we get more information. It isn't that our initial forecast is wrong. It's that we tell you a forecast evolves. It's not just one forecast and then you move on and come back three days later and say it was wrong. We stair step into forecasts. We don't, uh, like I said earlier, we don't all go gung-ho all in every time we see 10 inches of snow on the models. If we did that, uh, one year I added up all the times the GFS predicted snow and had it snowed all the times it said it would have, we would have had a couple inches, of, a couple hundred inches of snow. I think that year we had like eight inches. So it showed a couple hundred inches and we had eight inches. That's why we don't, we don't just base our forecast on one or two models and forecasts evolve. The, I guarantee you tomorrow the forecast will be different for portions of Southern Illinois and Southeast Missouri. It's very likely that additional counties will be added to the winter storm watch or maybe a winter weather advisory. Something will change. That's just the way winter storms work in our region. We also have to worry about snow banding. And uh, if you've been with me a while, you might remember snow banding are these intense narrow bands of snow and where they occur, you can get double the amount of forecasted snow. So a one to three inch snow uh, or a two to four inch snow can easily turn into a three to six. I've seen a two to four turn into a four to eight. 
Um, these small bands are usually tight and it can be narrow. A few miles, excuse me, a few miles wide. They can be long, but they can be quite narrow. And so where that occurs with this storm, that's where we'll have enhanced snowfall totals. Could somebody pick up five to 10 inches of snow in Southeast Missouri and Illinois? Yes, that, that is possible. Um, above that, I don't know. With the temperatures being marginal, it just depends on how hard the snow comes down. But snow banding will occur with this event, and where it does occur, you're going to get uh, extra snow. And so there's always uncertainties about where to place the snow banding. Uh, often we don't know until two, maybe three or four hours before uh, before the snow banding develops. Sometimes we know 24 hours in advance, but typically as little as two to four hours, uh, we can figure out where the snow banding is going to occur. And again, some areas can get a whole lot more snow where snow banding occurs. We've seen some big events, some small events turn into big events because of, uh, because of snow banding. So again, always monitor the most up-to-date weather forecast because weather evolves and is not static. We do welcome your snow reports. Let us know where you live. Don't forget, we have a Marion, Illinois, a Marion, Kentucky, a Marion, Tennessee. So let us know what city, county, and state. And let us know your snow totals. Don't measure drifts, although it may be hard to drift snow with these kind of wet, the wet snow may not drift much. Uh, measure three to five places and then average them together. And then that's the total you want to give us. And you can report those to me on Twitter at Bo Dotson. Also, uh, the National Weather Service Baduca has a Twitter. You can send it to them as well. Sometimes people ask me, what, why do we have snow or sleet or freezing rain or rain? What's the difference? So the, the big difference is warm air loft. If it's cold all the way from the surface up to the cloud, typically, not always, but typically that means snow. If there's a warm layer, a thin warm layer, and the snowflakes melt, once they melt, they can't become snowflakes again. So they become water. And then there, if there's a deep freezing layer beneath, beneath that warm layer, they turn into ice pellets and that's sleet. If the snowflake melts and the warm layer is deeper, but it's 32 or below at the surface, that's freezing rain. It doesn't have time to become that ice pebble, okay? So snow all the way frozen from top to bottom, a little bit of warm layer in here, melts the snowflake for sleet, and then you have this deeper cold layer so it becomes ice pellets. This one, a deeper warm layer and a shallow cold layer. That's freezing rain. If your snowflakes fall into warm air and it stays warm all the way to the ground, obviously that's rain. So that's the difference. We use analogs when forecasting. The number two analog for this event uh, is this. And so what are analogs? Analogs are when the models can look back and compare an event to an event that occurred years ago and then it will pick out the top 20 of them and show us, hey, these are the top 20 analogs. And if a bunch of those analogs look alike, our confidence increases in the snow forecast. Do you notice anything about this graphic? You might notice that that kind of lines up where the winter storm watch is. So this analog may be pretty accurate, we'll see. The number one analog, when I looked this morning, <laughs> showed very little snow, so I threw that one out. And this is the one that it seemed to make the most sense and it also matched uh, others. Don't forget to give plenty of room to the uh, transportation cabinet, transportation departments. Every year we have accidents because people aren't paying attention and they're on their phones and doing other things. So let's give them a lot of room so they can do their job, clear the roads, spread salt around. Also don't forget you can sign up for JP's traffic information. He also has a Facebook page. He covers Illinois, Southern Missouri, West Kentucky, and Northwest Tennessee, and he has an app as well, and I work closely with JP, really great guy, and if you like to receive his messages, uh, go over to his JP's traffic information page, and then uh, you can also Google JP's traffic, and it will bring it up, okay? So take it slow. If we do get ice and snow, clean off your vehicle. There's going to be a wet snow, so it's going to stick to everything. It's not just going to blow off your windshield and the top of your car. You're going to want to get the broom out and clear this off so you don't cause any accidents. And uh, keep it slow out there. And again, give the trucks room. Let's look at some probabilities from the WPC. NOAA, what's the probability of two more inches of snow? And you can see the highest probabilities over southeast Missouri 
and then look at this sharp decrease in the probabilities and all of the models are showing this sharp gradient so i feel confident this sharp gradient may actually occur it's just where to place that uh, gradient if the low tracks farther south then the gradient moves south if the low tracks tad north even 25 to 50 miles could make a difference in your forecast let's look at what the probability of four inches of snow and you see in this light blue area that's about a 70 to 80 percent chance so it's pretty high chances as you get down here this is one four now this is wpc doesn't mean it's right doesn't mean it's wrong it's just this is their forecast and they're basing it off of the models and what they're looking at in the service charts and making a forecast everybody's got to make a forecast i know some of the forecasts differ that's okay we've all got the same general idea what's the chance of eight inches of more snow and you can see in this green area 20 30 uh, maybe 40 percent chance of greater than eight inches so some heavy snow is possible most likely over Missouri and Illinois. That's the most likely scenario. Don't forget, I've got winter weather radars. They're on the weatherobservatory.com page. So weatherobservatory.com. They're also on the weathertalk.com website. And you can just click on radars and there's a couple of alternatives. If these go down, sometimes I forget. When these go down, there's also an alternative website that's usually up. So if something happens to one or the other, just switch over. Let's look at some snow probabilities county by county. So Perry and St. Genevieve counties in southeast Missouri, and then Franklin, Jackson, Jefferson, Perry, Randolph, and White counties in southern Illinois. I've got them a trace to an inch, 100%. It's going to happen. So two to four inches, I've got them at 90%. And then four to six inches, I've got it at 60%. And then you can see from there it goes down. We'll just, we'll see how this plays out. The, this, the actual accumulation part of this forecast is very, very tricky because of the temperatures. If, this, if, the, if we had temperatures in the 20s, this would be a significant winter storm that we would be looking at and a much easier forecast as well. As we move down, excuse me, as we move down to Gallatin, Celine, and Williamson, we've got them at a trace to an inch, about 100%. And then two to four inches at the 70 percent mark and then four to six at 20 percent maybe that's too low i don't know we'll see it's a tough call especially as you move further south and east it just gets more problematic so for example hardin massac and polk counties you can see they, their probabilities are lower uh, for the higher totals could it happen it could again if the low tracks further south and east and is a little stronger um, then yeah, then we'd have to increase these numbers. These are my first uh, forecast thoughts. Today's the first day I've made an actual forecast. Everything before this has just been me showing you some ideas of what might happen. This is my first forecast. Um, so Bowling and Cape Girardeau counties and then Alexander, Johnson, Pulaski and Union, I've got them at 90% chance of up to an inch of snow, 70% for two to four, and then it goes down um, from there. And we're going to start moving further south and east. So Butler, Mississippi, New Madras, Scott, and Stoddard, pretty high numbers still on the one inch. Uh, not quite as high in the two to four. This may need to be bumped up, especially for Butler County and maybe Stoddard. Further south and east probably doesn't need to be bumped up at this point. But I would say that Poplar Bluff and over that way, I would, I would be surprised if you're not in some kind of winter storm watch at some point. We'll see. Uh, that's up to the weather service. So... Uh, Dunklin and Pemiscott, and then Henry Lake, Montgomery, O'Brien, Stewart, Weekly Counties in West Tennessee. I've got them. This one is, this one should be lower. So I didn't change this one. I apologize. This one should be more like around 30% on the one inch range, and then 20% on the two to four, and then lower and lower from there. My apologies on that one. I didn't catch it. Uh, then Ballard, Carlisle, Fulton, Grace, Hickman, McCracken Counties. I've got them at 40% right now for up to one inch, and then it goes down from there. Again, could that change? Yes. Some of the data coming in does show the low tracking farther south. We'll just have to reevaluate it in the morning and look at it. I wouldn't get my hopes up if you lived in the Boot Hill, Kentucky, and Tennessee, and extreme so Illinois, but I also wouldn't turn my back on this particular system. Um, I've seen it many times where forecasts evolve and change, even up to the day of an event. Crittenden, Livingston, Marshall, and Union Counties, there's yours, about 50% up to an inch, and then it kind of goes down from there. As we move further south and east, the numbers decrease. So Caldwell, Davis, Henderson, Hopkins. Um, as you move further up northeast, 
you would think, well, why isn't Owensboro have higher numbers? It's because of the orientation of the low and the way it's moving. So it's more of a gradient from northwest to southeast than it is north to south. The gradient is more, again, northwest to southeast aligned. And you can kind of tell that by my numbers and the way they taper as you move further southeast and they go higher as you move further northeast. Sometimes it's higher as you go north and south, but this time it's northwest and then decreases as you go southeast. Okay, so you wanna stay tuned for updates over the coming uh, 24 hours. The event starts Tuesday evening, Tuesday afternoon, maybe some showers, and then we'll um, start seeing more and more precipitation Tuesday night into uh, 